can you first of all tell us what is artificial intelligence and how does it look different today than it did in the 80s? Now, artificial intelligence started off by looking at um, how does the brain work? How do the neurons connect it? But we didn't really have much computing power. And so in the 80s and 70s, uh, people were using what's called rule-based. So I'd sit you down, Dr. B, and ask you a lot of questions about your expertise. And we'd try and get that expertise into a computer as a set of rules, set of if-then rules. The field today is exploding with data because we've got data on the web, data on, data on TV, we've got text data, image data, video data, and we collect statistics on uh, all that data to be able to understand signals. So you speak with a certain accent, I speak with a different accent, someone else speaks with a, uh, another accent, yet uh, these speech recognition systems, for example, which is my field, is able to understand all of these accents, not by writing the rules for each one, but collecting examples of everyone's spoken words. And how can artificial intelligence increase your health later in life? Now, many of us wear you know, wearables or these watches or these bands uh, that measure everything about us. It used to be it would just measure heart rate. Then it would measure heart rate variability. Then it would measure pulse oxygen. Now you're seeing uh, these devices even measuring blood pressure. Um, and so before you would go to the doctor once a year maybe, and they'd measure your, uh, uh, your heart rate and, uh, and blood pressure. Now you can go, well, I've got every single heartbeat for the last five years. With all that data again, you can actually get more information, make more better diagnoses. And the holy grail is, can you predict disease before you actually get disease? So of all these technologies um, and products, which are you most excited about? I think drug discovery. It, it takes about a billion dollars and 20 years to discover a new drug. As you're starting in clinical trials, right at the beginning, you only have a 5% chance of getting to the end. It's extremely risky for companies to invent new drugs. It takes a long time. And so what we use as artificial intelligence is to collect data again. Uh, can we actually develop drugs on a computer before we even start giving it to people? Can we change that 5% number to 25%? And then can we reduce the time from 20 years to three years? Using data and using drug discovery techniques, we might be able to accelerate and reduce the cost of inventing new medicines. What do you think aging will look like 20, 50, maybe 100 years down the road? Uh, I think we're, this is going to be, at least this decade, the next 20 years, is going to be the decade of bioinformatics, the convergence of mathematics and biology, uh, computing, uh, science with uh, biochemistry, creating new models. Uh, if you take 20 to 40 years, 50 years, then we're going to be looking at the convergence of machines with humans. And already we can get knee replacements, we can get deep brain stimulation, if you have Parkinson's, you get cochlear implants. We're going to have this uh, convergence of replacements of, of, of parts of the human body. There's a sort of an ethical issue, particularly in the gene editing area. Do we actually want to do all of those things? That Are there unforeseen items that could happen by changing parts of the body? And how will we react with each other? And I think in a hundred years time, if you can actually live to 120, 150, are you going to do the same career? Are you going to stay married for the same person for 125 years? Are you going to be able to afford to live 125 years? Society could change very, very different. Will we ever be able to upload our brains to a machine and effectively live forever? Well, let's say we could do that. Would it still be you in that machine? That would be the thing that you'd have to ask. Is it really existence if it's not connected to anything? It's not connected to a body, it's not connected to the environment. So maybe we could do that with you, extract your personality uh, by looking at all your writings, all your videos, all your books, 
uh, extracting all of those things, all your pictures, your home videos, your home pictures, because we have so much stuff now uh, on our on our phones. Our entire life uh, is now recorded. Maybe we could make a replica Doctor B uh, that's there, but would it still be you? Well, it have to be a lot deeper than that because what you need, the body has. Uh, Hormones, dopamine, serotonin, emotion. I mean, I mean, how would you program guilt? How would you program jealousy? You know, it's, it's more complex emotions uh, to program. If you, it's more than just the memories and more than just the facts. We'd have to actually build in uh, those emotional, biological models that happen to us as humans, but in a mathematical formalism. The, the AI that we see in the world today is not actually doing any, any understanding. When we're talking to our phone, it's not actually doing any understanding. It's just doing pattern recognition at the moment. Uh, now, could we get there? Uh, I think as computer scientists, we would like to uh, at least see if that would be possible. And so I think we do need to think about uh, the issues of what, could, what would be the implications if these things are possible.